So today I'll just be covering um, a, a bit of an introduction to our program. I'm mostly actually today going to focus on um, our approach, so how we've kind of um, arrived at where we are today and formulated a bit of a plan moving forward for the year. Um, talk a little bit about the initiatives we've put into action and there's some time for questions at the end. For us, where did it all begin? Um, really, in, the, in um, 2022, we introduced the, this co-design lab concept at Griffiths, mainly down Nathan campus. Um, and at the time, it was really supposed to be um, part of a one-off engagement to seek student voice and engagement on our campus redevelopment at the Nathan campus. Um, that engagement was really successful. Our students came brimming with ideas. Um, and so the team at the time progressed with other activations in the space. And since we kind of brought it into our portfolio, we've um, worked on approximately 30 or more projects in the lab um, and a lot of kind of pop-up engagements as well. And so mid last year, we started to consider how we might progress a more formal approach to partnerships with students and student voice. And like the co-design lab, there have been some other really great examples across the university um, in this space. And so we wanted to kind of see how we might bring some of that existing work together um, and then look at some new initiatives in this space. So to begin, we really sat down and thought about the high level purpose behind the project. And really at the end of the day, um, the focus has to be on students. So really how this program of work can create opportunities for them to raise their voices and make a positive impact on their experiences of studying at Griffiths. Our next step was really to sit down and consider some key high level questions before we started actually building our plan and our approach. So Griffith is a values led university. So really the, the project needed to be aligned to those values and aligned to our strategy. There's some um, really great best practice concepts and examples out there um, and, and, this, and within this practitioners network. So we really wanted to draw um, upon some of those examples, but then think about how we could make this program distinct to Griffith. Griffith um, has five campuses, which probably um, some may not, not be aware of. So whilst the program is taking a, a whole of university approach, We've, we really do need to consider the place-based model within that because we have these really diverse cohorts of students um, at our various campuses. We're um, probably like a lot of institutions going through a lot of change. So there are a lot of projects and stakeholders to consider. Um, and so we really want to think about how we would connect in with those projects and partner and work al alongside them. Um, and as we know, the, the Accord, um, hot topic right now. So we have started to think about how some of those program initiatives can address some of the outcomes. Um, and then really more broadly, what infrastructure we need to support the program now and into the future. Our next steps really from there was our approach. So we started to consider how we might um, kind of map out this, this plan of attack and think about um, our priority being to connect with students to formulate the initiatives. So we've really given our timelines and the allocated resources we have. We have um, kind of about at the moment one to two full-time um, staff members, one being an academic lead and myself as a practice lead, and we also have an executive sponsor. So we really have broken this down for this year. We're in that established um, phase of approach and hopefully if we can kind of gain some further funding and support, we'll be able to move next year into stage two where we'll really start to embed um, the initiatives we've, we've um, kind of worked on throughout this year. Our first um, kind of when we formulated this, um, this project was in August. So when we commenced our discovery, it was around the time of open day. And so we thought, um, it might be interesting to connect with prospective students to understand kind of what their thoughts and ideas were around student voice and partnerships. We know, um, excitingly, there's a lot of student voice happening in um, high schools these days and even primary school to an extent. Um, so we thought it would be interesting to see what those thoughts and ideas would be um, through open day. The engagement was really positive. We probably didn't have as many people as we expected come through. Um, I guess the biggest lesson we learned out of this was the language we used. In a shorter 
um, kind of walk-in style engagement like this, we found that actually student voice and partnerships can be quite a difficult thing to explain in simple terms to a prospective student. So would we do this again? We probably wouldn't. It was a good lesson. Um, it was a good way to test and, and, and see. But um, if we were to do something again with prospective students, we'd really think about particularly the language we used in that engagement. We moved on in week five to um, engagement with students. So we had about um, just over 250 students come through the co-design lab we, at Nathan and we did some pop-up engagements. And through that, we had some really great, um, I guess, findings from students. That's really helped us actually formulate um, the, the initiatives that we've put in place for this year and, and how we're going to try to build out this program. So. Our students really want flexible offerings. We know students are busy. Um, they're juggling multiple priorities. Often, um, given what's happening in the world right now, they're working more and they're time precious, but they still want to have a say. And so they want a range of opportunities that they can kind of pick and choose from that best, um, that are adapted to their needs, I guess. Um, Interestingly, there was a career focus to some of um, from our students. So many want to engage in the initiative, but out of that, they also want to have um, opportunities for industry experience, mentoring and ways to build um, knowledge and skills. On the flip side of that, many said that it was important that this had a social connect, um, aspect. So they really want initiatives out of our program that also build friendships and connections and that um, grow that and build that sense of belonging in community. It's not surprising here that um, there's real partnerships. So we know students genuinely want to feel seen and heard um, and really actually want to see, um, interestingly, we were just talking about this in the breakout room, um, the results of their contributions. They, they want to see that loop. Um, as I mentioned, five campuses. So um, campus informed, I guess, was the last um, key finding. So students want to feel part of that wider Griffith community, but it's equally important for them to feel part of their local campus community and also part of their kind of academic group and program community as well. So we, um, alongside our student engagements, we've had a lot of opportunity to connect with staff and projects and teams as well. And so through all that feedback, we've brought together some really high level objectives that we'd like to meet as part of this program of work for the year. Um, really, we want to create and help create awareness and understandings of, of our principles and the principles of student voice and partnership. Um, we really want to test and learn throughout the year alongside students and staff, um, and we're very lucky we've been given kind of permission to kind of go out and test and, and make mistakes along the way if we need to, to really understand what we need out of this program. Shoveling the loop between feedback and outcomes has been a key message, particularly from staff, but also students. So for this year, as I said, we're being given permission to kind of test and learn. And so we've really um, adopted an agile and iterative approach to implementing these initiatives along the way. One of the key things we're um, pursuing with is this student, the concept of the student voice community. So like every institution, we have formal committees, um, we have a student experience committee, and we have um, a, a really huge range of um, student reps um, interesting with Griffith, we actually have two kind of student-led um, bodies. We have a student representative council and a student guild, one for the Gold Coast and one for Nathan. So that's an interesting dynamic. Um, and this community um, we see is will help kind of bring that together in a more of whole of the institution approach. Students um, really want, um, we really want to enable leadership opportunities for our students. So that's an objective. Um, and um, lastly, we really want to establish that evaluation and reporting framework. So we really want to measure how this, um, how the initiatives um, are, are received and engaged in and the impact that we're making so that we can kind of further grow beyond this year as well. By our objectives, um, we've kind of narrowed that down to some five guiding principles. So really um, fostering that culture within the university, which we know, um, you know, this is such a great space to work in and being able to kind of 
get out there in the Griffith community with staff and students and foster that culture that's inclusive and values student voice and student contributions is, is really key to what we're to, trying to achieve. Um, and partnering with students on issues that matter. So we really um, want to remain closely connected to students to understand um, the things that they want to direct their attention to and have a say in. Um, and lastly, we still think that that um, in that in those principles, leadership um, and measuring that impact is important as well. I guess what's not mentioned in these principles is something we do really value um, is how we reward students for their time. Um, I'm excited about the working group that SVA is putting together because around how students are being um, rewarded. Um, and incentives because uh, it is something that we value through the engagements, particularly in the Go Design Lab to date. We have provided where we can incentives for students and we have students come and work in the lab to help facilitate the sessions as well. Um, and so really one of the principles that we're thinking about is how we can take that forward into, into a more defined model. So we've arrived then, um, after all that work has probably been six months of a lot of consultation and engagement, is, is three main initiatives that we want to focus on for the year. And that's our co-design lab, um, this concept of the co-design incubator and student voice. So really um, working on a, a formal student voice framework that will probably encompass our whole kind of student partnerships and student voice approach as an institution. So in terms of the co-design lab, um, you know, we've had over 5,000 students experience that lab since its inception. So now we're trying to think about ways that we can kind of provide, provide a more diverse range of experiences within the lab and also think about how we might want to connect with other um, parties, not just Griffith staff. So, for example, bringing industry in the lab to work with students. We really want to expand our presence across the campuses. So we've been very lucky to have a space at Nathan. So now we want to see how we can um, kind of be more active on the other campuses because that diverse student voice and contribution is, is really key to what we're wanting to achieve. Um, and the code, code will work with the co-design lab to make sure that it's really connected into this um, student voice framework that we're developing and I guess the principles of the program overall. Probably the most exciting, um, I guess, initiative we have is um, this year we've managed to kind of broker a partnership with a Griffith Business School to embed student partnerships within curriculum. Um, an exciting space. So we have two um, work integrated learning courses who um, are led by um, an academic by the name of Graham Hughes. And he's worked at the university for a while um, running these kinds of engagements with students. And so this, these two courses provide, you know, an experiential learning space. So a way for students to engage with a work integrated learning experience, but also a way to actually impact things that are happening at Griffith and, and, and to partner with us. So we have Griffith teams and projects coming into the incubator to work with students. We have industry and we also have fellow students, so student-led projects coming into that space. With this particular course, we value um, the experience a work integrated learning course can have um, for a student in terms of um, finding their purpose and preparing them for um, future employment. So there are no enrollment restrictions on these courses available to all students across all disciplines. Um, and look, we recognise that some programs don't have electives, um, so we do have volunteer arrangements with um, in place. So if students can't formally enrol, they can still come into to the incubator and participate and, and act as a student consultant, essentially. One of the really great examples of um, a student-led project that we've brought into the incubator in trimester three is our clothing library. So um, we've worked with the clothing library for a little while in terms of part, um, the student partnerships space and in student life. Um, two students, Sophie and Louise, had this really great idea to support students who need business wear for interviews, internships, graduation ceremonies and placements to access free secondhand clothing on a trust loan based system. So 
We've supported Sophie and Louise to set up permanently in a space on our Nathan campus. And then we have opportunities through the other campuses um, to take donations uh, and students for access um, to that um, clothing as well. Um, as they're kind of growing this initiative, they've, they've needed more help. They're, they're two students, they're busy. Um, Louise has actually now graduated and working. So in trimester three, we brought the closing library into the incubator and the students within the course have helped them develop a formal marketing plan and some collateral. And they've also been working with them to develop a volunteering model concept so that um, they can have the, the library open uh, for longer hours um, and be a little bit more supported by a student um, volunteering model. The great thing is that for some students, we have other courses within the university that have um, are connected to volunteering. So they can come and volunteer and get their hours up for those courses within the clothing library as well. So student voice um, framework is kind of... Um, a big part of the work that we're doing um, this year within the program as well. So how can we actually develop a range of mechanisms that will engage with a more diverse range of student voices? So as I said, we have student reps and we have a student experience committee, um, but how can we actually support, I guess, um, our, particularly our student reps with connecting in with a broader base of student voice to bring those to those committees and those formal de um, decision making and governance bodies within the university. So at the moment we're reviewing student representatives, so running workshops and talking and connecting with reps to see how we can improve their experience. Um, and part of that is building this student voice collective um, that student reps are part of that they can come into, students have the option to sign up and come into the collective and be involved in student voice activities. So our student reps can then um, connect with a, a large body of students, but staff can also do that as well. And it probably provides, um, unlike co-design and the incubator, another mechanism for student voice that's a little bit more agile and, and, and quicker for, for teams to kind of seek opinions and, and input from students. So in terms of that framework, this is probably where I'm at at the moment, thinking about those mechanisms and how they feed in um, in, in terms of the broader um, program. And I think this is just really a small snap snapshot of how that framework will build out as we're working um, throughout the year on these initiatives to kind of formulate more of a, um, a focused and formal plan about how we'll um, move forward next year if we can. Probably where to from here, this was our initial kind of time frame and, and the plan and um, it, it does um, change. As you know, we always have curveballs in this, in this space, but I think we're in the most exciting point at the moment. We're in that prototype and test phase. Um, and so we're just trying lots of little things within these three kind of broader initiatives to see what students need. Um, is it kind of bringing us the outcomes we need? Um, to move forward into a more formal framework and program from here. That's pretty much it from me. Um, I, I, I do really thank you for engaging in the time and, and hearing um, a little bit more about what we're doing. Um, but my contacts are here and I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll share the slideshow with Anna um, if you're wanting to connect. Um, and yeah, there's some time for questions if anyone has any. I'll pop them in the chat either or. <laughs> I'll start with the quick question if that's all right. Um, thank you so much for that presentation. It was really interesting and you've done so much work to get where you are. So good luck with that timeline. <laughs> I know how it, um, yeah, <laughs> how it can change. Um, I really liked your um, referencing like shortening the loop based on feedback from staff members. Um, we speak a lot about like closing the feedback loop, but yeah, I love that idea of shortening it. Um, do you have any, like, yeah, have you put that into practice yet or do you have any examples of, like, what what that looks like for you or is that the goal that you're hoping to get to, like, when you bring all the, the voice framework together? Okay. Look, I think it's definitely an end goal. Um, I think this the collective that um, we've built out, it's... Um, I mean, at the moment, it's, it's a lo-fi team site. Um, you know, we haven't, we don't have a lot of money to to build systems. So, um, but 
I see that as a really great opportunity for um, staff and students and reps to come in and just quickly engage with a body of students. So um, it's an opt-in process for students. And what I'm hoping to build throughout the year is um, as, I, as I get more time and capacity is probably um, a way to filter for students their um, areas of interest, their time commitment and things like that. So we can actually be a little bit more targeted when we come into that collective and ask questions or ask for students to, to contribute. Um, and so, yeah, I think that will evolve. The co-design lab's been really great for feedback, um, but it is a, a bit of a longer tail because you do have a lot of, um, a, a fair bit of resource has to go into kind of taking the insights and formulating and collecting and, and, and writing up um, kind of your results, which is, has been really useful. Um, but yeah, I think that collective and just a little bit um, will provide a little bit more agility for us in that space. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you so much. Sarah, I might just quickly jump in too, because I'm quite new to um, this space. First of all, that was really great, um, very insightful. And yeah, I'd love to get to that stage at some point here at Murdoch University. Um, but just going back to the very beginning where you were talking about, um, you know, establishing the program objectives, et cetera, was that right from the get-go done in consultation with, with students? Is that how that worked? Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, we're lucky with the co-design lab um, through a lot of the engagements and the insights that that gave us a little bit of a starting point, even though some of the activations weren't about student partnerships, a lot of it kind of gave us a big picture about what students want and, and sense of, um, we did a sense of belonging study, which actually really helped feed some of that, um, those objectives. Um, a lot of it was consultation with staff as well and, and, and looking at strategy and where we're going as an institution, but definitely talking to students um, was key in that because I think, you know, we really, so that translation piece needs to happen. We all know it, you know, as a university, we sometimes speak a language that students don't necessarily understand. So we needed to look at both sides and kind of come together in the middle and, and come up with those kind of key objectives from there. Yeah, right, yeah. Very, very exciting and, um, yeah, well done. The other question too, you were mentioning, and I'm sorry I forgot his name, there was a um, an academic from a discipline that you collaborate with. What what Was he from a particular um, career, like um, faculty or what have you that was aligned to? What what was that? So yeah. That. yeah. Um, so Graham Hughes um, works within our business school. He's been business here for a little school. while, yeah, mm -hmm. um, and he has um, throughout his, in the last few years, had what was called the business lab um, and it was a work integrated learning um, mm -hmm. unit but probably more focused on industry um, not so much on internal Griffith and student-led projects so um, we just had a really great connection early on um, with Graham and and conversations went from there so he's kind of joined um, us but is still teaching but we've transformed that the courses he was leading into that incubator concept. So it is more focused around students as consultants. But um, the other part of that course, which um, Graham probably um, kind of speaks to more um, in a better way than I will, but he he really, it's about connecting students to their purpose. Like they come in for this work integrated learning um, unit, it's internal, they're not going out to an employer. Um, and so it's a bit of a discovery piece for them over the 12 weeks that they're, they're working on something that's tangible, but it's actually about them discovering and focusing on um, the things that they enjoy about putting the, the what they've learned into practice. So there's a really big piece um, around purpose and career readiness that sits within that course as well, which is great. Mm. Great. Thank you. I'm happy to share the course links if you want to if anyone wants to have a bit of a read of the descriptions it probably describes it better than I can <laughs> yeah that would be great we maybe will share this with the slides and the recording um to the network as well I have one more question in the chat 
uh, before we move on to networking a little bit more after um presentation but um sarah susie is asking have you had any thoughts about online mechanisms for replicating the co-design lab experience rather than expanding the labs to the other campuses great question um thanks susie um so we do have a tool which i haven't mentioned um in this that we use it's called recollective i'm not sure if anyone's um out there is using that um, but it is an, an, an insights tool. Um, it's probably, um, we, and we have used a lot for more online engagement. Um, it's a really great tool because you can um, build screening questions in. So if you need to target a particular um, subset of students for a study, you can you can do that through some pre-screening questions. Um, and then within the tool itself, you can actually do a lot of activities that kind of replicate what you might do in a co-design session with students. Um, we we'll still continue to, to kind of leverage that tool because it has been great to, to make sure we have that online engagement with students who don't necessarily come to campus. Um, and a bit like co-design though, it, it is a longer process. So I think the collective, which we've built out on Teams, but we'll do some in-person engagement will be that um that kind of quicker mechanism to engage with voice and partnership amazing thank you so much um sarah this was very much in detail and um i really appreciate you sharing uh, what you've been up to and being the first one this year as well it's always intimidating um mm -hmm. and uh, thank you for everyone's questions as well